What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the performance of an eGPU, this is a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, connected to the all new Intel NUC i7 Bean Canyon. A few weeks back I did a review on the Bean Canyon and I absolutely love this little machine, but I want a little more graphics performance out of it. So I went ahead and purchased an external GPU enclosure. This is the Sonnet 450 watt eGFX enclosure. I originally planned to throw a lower end GPU in here like a 1066 gigabyte, but EVGA was kind enough to send me over an RTX 2080 for review. So I'm going to put this in here. We're going to see what an RTX 2080 and the i7 Bean Canyon NUC can do. The card I'm going to be using is the EVGA RTX 2080 XC Ultra. This is an 8 gigabyte 2080. It's a monster card and they're very expensive right now. By the time this video is up, this will be in my main rig. I recently built a new machine for the new year, and I'll be making a video on that very shortly, so keep an eye on the channel. To connect this Thunderbolt 3 eGPU to your NUC is very easy, but you got to remember that you're not going to be running this card at full speed. Basically, we're going to get the same performance as if we had this card connected to a PCIe X4 slot instead of a X16. All you have to do is mount your GPU inside of the enclosure and then plug in your Thunderbolt 3 cable to your Thunderbolt 3 enabled device. Luckily, the new Bean Canyon NUX do support Thunderbolt 3. I did run into one issue. This EVGA 2080 takes up about two and a half slots inside of a regular size gaming PC. This only has two slots on it, so I did have to remove the back plate. Here's a 2080 versus the 2070. As you can see, it's a much taller card. Here's a quick look at the internals of the NUC. I'm running 16 gigabytes of Vengeance 2400 MHz RAM, and I have a 256 gigabyte cheap silicon power SSD. So with everything thrown together, here's a quick rundown on the specs. Inside of the NUC, we have the i7-8559U. This will turbo up to 4.5 GHz. It's a quad-core CPU with eight threads. It's only 28 watts. It's a very low wattage CPU, but it still gets hot inside of this NUC. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 MHz Vengeance RAM, and the GPU is obviously the EVGA RTX 2080 XC Ultra. For storage, a cheap 256 gigabyte SSD, plus I'm going to be running some games from an external 2 terabyte USB 3.0 hard drive. So I love benchmarks and graphs just as much as the next guy. But what I want to see is real world gaming performance. Now, I don't really care about 1% lows. If the game runs at 60 FPS or above, and it looks good to me, I'll play the heck out of it. So in this video, you're going to be seeing a lot of gameplay. I only ran one benchmark, and that's the Far Cry 5 benchmark. I think that's a good representation of how the game's going to play. Got a lot of stuff in 4K. This thing handles a lot of games really well at 4K, high and ultra. Some of these games I did have to take down to 1440p, and it will be listed on screen. I also have Afterburner running, so you can see the minimum, average, maximum FPS, CPU usage, GPU usage, all the basics here. So without further ado, let's get into some gameplay. First up, we have Overwatch. In the bottom left hand corner, you will see what settings I'm using for each game. This is 4K Ultra with 100% resolution scaling. Up in the top left hand corner, we have our CPU usage, our CPU clock and wattage, RAM usage, FPS, minimum FPS, average FPS, max FPS, and our GPU temp and usage. The whole system was connected to a 42 inch LG 4K television, so we are at a real 4K resolution. All of this is screen captured at 4K. I'm gonna stop talking now, and if there's something I need to explain in a certain game, I'll be back. So here's Crisis 3, high preset, 4K, we just can't hit that 60 FPS mark, so I did have to bump it down to 1440p, the game still looks absolutely amazing at that resolution. Hold up. 
themselves using intelligent munitions means they only blow up unauthorized, like us. Use your suit to interface with the mines. Disable them. Well, that's one way to do it. That should be enough. Come on. You know GTA 5 had to be tested here. We're at 4K, very high and high presets. I wish there was just a single preset for very high. I also have tessellation and ambient occlusion off. That really kills this thing. You got lucky, buddy. So you're gonna drive into me. In my opinion, Far Cry 5 has one of the best benchmarking tools that I've seen in a long time. I wish every game would add something like this. This is 4K Ultra Settings. And with the setup we have here, the 2080 over Thunderbolt 3, we just can't hit a steady 60 FPS at Ultra or even High Settings. I've always had trouble with Far Cry 5. I don't know if it's because the game is not well optimized or it's just a really high-end game. But none of the systems that I've ever been able to test have hit 60 FPS at 4K. But at 1440p high settings we can get right there at the edge. We did have a dip down to 56 but I don't think you'd ever notice this if you didn't have an FPS counter on screen. And the final test I ran was the Witcher 3. We're at 4K high preset and I turned Nvidia Hairworks off. Move it!
This setup just isn't going to cut it with The Witcher 3, 4K, high settings, so I dropped it down to 1440p, and it's a much better frame rate. So there you have it. I think the test was more than successful. A lot of these games were able to achieve over 60 FPS, 4K, high and ultra settings. Some of these games we did have to drop down to 1440p, but in the end, this little machine is a beast. Is this practical? I mean, would you want to go out and spend $800 on a GPU and then $350 on a NUC just to build a gaming PC? Probably not, but since I had everything in my possession, I figured I'd go ahead and test it. And yeah, this is now a gaming machine. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I do have a few more eGPU videos coming up. I own the Skull Canyon and the Hades Canyon, along with several different GPUs I wanted to test out. If you want to see anything running, any kind of combo, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.